In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a photo like this and turn it into this, this, and this. Hi creator friends, this is Kathy from Easy Sunday Club. On our YouTube channel, we help artists and designers turn their creative daydreams into reality with practical business tips, how-tos, and occasionally watercolor tutorials. In this video, I'm going to answer one of the requests from my recent post about how to create your own greeting card mock-up. Now, you can download a mock-up online. I think there are free ones out there if you Google it, or you can buy one on Creative Market. But I find that often some of those digital mock-ups are kind of stiff and not natural looking enough. And maybe you want to show more of your personality or brand aesthetics. So I want to show you how to close that gap by making your own mock-up. So what you will need for this little project is a phone that takes photos. Or if you have a nice digital camera, definitely use that. Also a computer because we'll be editing on there. And as far as apps go, I recommend and will be using in this tutorial the app called Snapseed, which is a photo editing app on mobile phone. It's available on Android and iOS. And I will be using Photoshop CC as well on my computer. But you can use other versions of Photoshop too. And in terms of materials, you're also going to need a card and an envelope. You can use a blank cardstock already folded as a card if you want to. I like to have a design on there just so I already have a product photo ready to go and I can just edit it out. So I'll show you how I edit this out. And this card is A2 size, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half inch. Also going to use a white poster board. This is at the minimum what you need. If you have an interesting backdrop for the card, definitely use that to show more of your brand aesthetic. But for simplicity, I'm going to show you how to take the photo on a poster board. And also, you can bring any other props that you like to use. I know flat lay is kind of its own art form. By no means an, a professional flat lay photographer, but I you know, know enough to be able to pull off my own mock-up photo. So let's get started. So let's start by setting up the layout for this photo. I'm going with something straightforward and easy to follow. Uh, let's place the envelope down and place the card on top of it. You just want a peak of the envelope. You want to make sure the card stays flat. So if you use a thick cardstock like me, sometimes the top part doesn't stay down completely. So what I did was just inserting a double-sided tape to keep it down. This looks good. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of styling to it, which is you know, the whole point of doing yourself versus buying a digital mock-up, right? So again, we're not professional flat lay photographers here, so you want to keep it simple. Maybe you, you can use some found objects around the house, or in my case, like grab a couple of twigs from the local flower shop or in nature during your walks to add some personality to your product photo. So here I've added a paintbrush and this here, so instantly it adds more texture to this photo, which makes it look more interesting. So now let's frame the shot. I have an iPhone here I'll use to take the photo. You may notice that there's some shadows here already. We're shooting this in daylight, but it's an overcast day and we're not super close to a window. There's some natural light coming in, but you can see some shadows here. Again, we're not trying to be professional photographers here. I'm not gonna go into details about how to optimize lighting, but it is bright enough for me to get a good enough photo and we can do rest of the editing on our phone or on Photoshop. So using the iPhone, I'm going to frame my shot here. You do want to make sure you have enough white space all around the main content because, you know, it's easier to crop than, you know, to have to make up space afterwards. And that's why you want to get a poster board that's much bigger than the card. I'm going to just focus, select the focus for this photo. I'm going to lift the brightness just a little bit. here, take a couple of them, Let's see if this looks good, yep, you do want to make sure your hand is really steady, because if you move around the photo is going to be a little blurry, so if you want to use a tripod for it, that's fine too, no, I don't want to get too fancy here, okay, this looks good, on my screen it looks a little dark, 
And again, because no, we're not trying to set up a crazy lighting setup here, but we can do a lot of the post-production edit on Photoshop or on Snapseed. So let me show you that part. So first, I have the photo open on my Snapseed app. It's available on iOS and Android, and I think it's only $2.99. So at first glance, I know I definitely want to brighten the photo. So I'm going to go in to Tools, First Icon to Image. This is where maybe half the magic happens. It defaults to brightness, but you can just you know calibrate it by sliding to the left or right. I'm going to start with... 60. I'm just gonna speed through this because you know it's here. There's no magic number. It really depends on your starting point and where you want to get to. So just go down the list and adjust each of the settings to how you want it to look. So this looks pretty good. Uh, next, I want to clean up the shadow a bit. You see the blemishes here when you zoom in? I left them there on purpose when I took the photo just so I can show you how to clean it up. This app has a healing tool. Third row, first icon is similar to the healing tool on Photoshop, but now you can use it on your phone without Photoshop. So again, yeah, just quickly cleaning up here. Oops, uh, right here, looks good. All right, that's good. And I also wanna, you can also heal this part, the bottom left, just swipe over that covers it and now if you hold on to if you're home and hold on to the photo you can already see the before and after and it's pretty drastic right but i'm not happy with it yet because i want to brighten up the bottom shadow area so go back to tools brush second row last icon this is where you can spot treat any parts of the photo without applying it to the entire photo so i only want to brighten up this part at the bottom so I'll go to Dodge, which is you know similar to Photoshop. Dodge and Burn is like brighten and darken. Goes from negative 10 to 10. So I only want to do five, not too crazy. I'm just gonna, you're like kind of rubbing it in to bleach out the dark parts. I think five is a good setting to do this. So now it already looks more even across, but you know, as I'm blending in the color, I noticed that I am lightening the envelope, the brush and otter in the process, and I actually don't want to do that. So to remedy this, you, I'll go back to negative five, burn. I'm just gonna zoom in and spot treat this area to bring it back to its original darkness. Same thing with the envelope, with the brush, and saturation i'm going to bring up the saturation again of both of these things maybe the envelope too and actually here i want to desaturate this plant because i don't like how bright it is and if i'm going to swap out this design with other card designs i want it to be a little more neutral so just continue spot treating this Looks good. See the before after. <laughs> this is so much better. And the last thing I'm going to do is sharpen it. So that was tools, detail, second icon. Um, between structure and sharpen, I like sharpen more. I'll zoom in and show you. You do structure, it's just too harsh in my opinion. So I'm going to leave it there. Go to sharpen. And I just want to sharpen enough so that when I'm using this as a product photo and someone's zooming in, they can see the details of the envelope, they can see the cardstock, the linen texture on it, and they can see the details of the design. I think 15 is a good setting there. Okay, that's pretty much done. And if you took a photo of a blank cardstock, then you can skip the next part and actually go check out part one of the series if you haven't already. In that video, I'm going to show you how to take a mock-up like this without a design and, and just swap in your own design and make it look realistic. But if you, like me, you took a photo of a real card and you want to clean up this area to make it into a blank template, then watch the next part. So now I have this edited image open on Photoshop. My main goal here is just to remove this design and leave a blank cardstock so that I can swap in any other card design I want to. So what I'm gonna do is, I prefer the clone tool 
And that's something that Snapseed doesn't have. Snapseed does have the other option, which is the healing tool. And you can use that as well. Um, it works okay, but in my opinion, it doesn't work perfectly. Like sometimes it gets weird and yeah, I prefer the cloning tool. Well, these are just two options. So clone tool is where I can take an area I want to borrow information or color pattern from and replace it and put it on something else. So I want to borrow it from here. So I press option, click down to where I want to borrow it from and then start applying it to where I want it to go. So the cross sign is where it's taking the color from. And as long as I'm staying away from other things, then I can work through this pretty quickly. Same thing with this right here. I use this a lot. I use this to digitize my watercolor, to clean up my watercolor art, to make them into prints. So I can do this pretty fast, but it might take a little bit to get used to. Voila! As you zoom in, you can still see the linen texture because I used the clone tool. Another thing I want to do is just brighten up the whole thing a bit more. So I went to dodge, set the exposure to very small, tiny, tiny. Maybe I want to do mid-tone. I just want to lift the brightness very, very slightly. Okay, now you have your own blank greeting card mock-up. Like I said, you can do the same to art prints. If you just take photo of a blank art print, you're already ready to go. And make sure to watch part one of the series and you'll be on your way to making your own beautiful product mock-ups. Thanks for watching. If you found that helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and let me know what other tutorials or videos or topics you want me to explore next time and remember you don't have to have everything figured out you just have to take the next step i'll see you next time